Let's look at chapter two today. We're going to be investigating relations and functions. You know that a relation is a set of pair of input and output values. So it's ordered pairs, mappings, tables, and graphs. The domain is the input or the X coordinates. The range is the output or the Y coordinates. And a function is a relation where every element of the domain corresponds with exactly one element of the range. Then the vertical line test is the test we use to determine whether a relation really is a function. If a vertical line passes through more than one point on the graph of a relation, then the relation is not a function. We're going to learn to use function notation. That's the f of x symbol. And f is the name of the function. So f of x shows the function notation. It shows the name of the function f. And it also represents the range value f of x. That's the y value for the domain when the, do when the x coordinate is given. You read the function as f of x or as a function of x. Note that f of x doesn't mean f times x. And then you should know that the independent variable is the x value. It's the input of the function. And the dependent variable, that's the output of the function or the y value because the y value depends on your choice for x. So we could say the y value is the function value at some given x. So let's jump into the lesson. We're going to use the graph below to create a table of values. And I'm just going to start at negative 2. And I see that when x is negative 2, y is negative 4. And then when x is negative 1, y is negative 3. And 0, negative 2 is called our y-intercept. And 1, negative 1. And then 2, 0 would be the solution or the root or the 0 of our function. In example 2, we're going to look at the mapping. We're using the mapping now, and we want to write the relation as a set of ordered pairs. So when you read the mapping, the independent variable is negative 5, and it maps to the output or dependent variable negative 2. And then just moving down the mapping following how each point in x maps to a certain y, I write that as a set of ordered pairs, and we have that relation. In example three, we're looking at domain and range. So to find the domain and range of each relation below, the domain is the independent variable or the x coordinates. And I don't have to list eight twice. You can if you want, but you don't have to. That's the domain. The range is the dependent variable or the y value, and again, I'm just listing them in the order that they appear. In part b, I have a graph, so given that graph, it's a continuous function, and because it's continuous, it means that the domain is all reals, and the range the highest value for the range is the y value at the vertex. The vertex is at negative 1, 2. So the range goes from negative infinity up to positive 2 and includes the value positive 2. So this function is a continuous function. You can draw that function without lifting your pencil. Where example C, that is discrete data, it's a set of ordered pairs. So our domain is the x-coordinate, negative 3, negative 2, and positive 1. And the range is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 
0, and 1. And you can tell that this is not a function, where letter B is a function. In this next example, we're going to do some explaining. Is the relation a function? Explain how we know and give a reason why or why not. So looking at example A, you can tell that each x value is not unique. You see how there's a 1 here and a 1 here? So we break the definition of what it means to be a function because when x is 1, there are two different y values. And then in letter B, you notice the same thing when x is 4. 4 maps to negative 1, and 4 also maps to positive 3. So both A and B are just relations. A is a relation, and it's not a function, so we can say A is a relation only. And the reason is because we map 1 to negative 1, and we also map 1 to positive 7. So it's going to fail the vertical line test. And B is also just a relation. And the re reason that B is only a relation is similar reasoning because 4 maps to negative 1 and 4 also maps to positive 3. So we have um, the same X with different Y values. And we could also say that they fail the vertical line test. Same x with different y values, and they fail the vertical line test. Now, if you don't know about the vertical line test, we're going to look at this situation here. So when you think about the vertical line test, you can determine whether the relation shown below are functions by using the vertical line test. And then we want to see if we can name the domain and the range for each relation. And in letter A, you could definitely pass a vertical line and only touch one point at a time. So yes, that is going to be a function. And the domain, because it's continuous, it's just a parabola. The domain is all reals. And the range is going to begin at 0, 2. So the range would start at 2, and it would go up infinitely, both left and right. And then on letter B, I can pass the vertical line test until we get here at negative 1. And we fail the vertical line test at negative 1. So this is not a function. It's only a relation. The domain is going to go from negative 4 to positive 4, including the endpoints. So we want to use brackets. And the range looks like it goes um, from negative 2 up to positive 3, and it includes those y values as well. For example 6, we want to use function notation with our equation here, y equals 3x minus 5, and I want to substitute negative 3, so negative 9 minus 5 is going to give us negative 14. 3 times negative 1 minus 5 is negative 8. 3 times 0 minus 5 is negative 5. And then substituting 1, we get negative 2. Substituting 2, we get positive 1. And substituting 4, we get 7. In example 7, you want to match each equation with the situation. So let's assume Tom buys a book with a $50 bill. And the change he gets from the cashier is a function of the price of the book. So that looks like letter C to me. We're buying the book for $50 and we're getting we're giving the cashier $50 and we're subtracting the price of the book. For number 2, rent, Rick rents a scooter for $50 a day and his total cost 
is a function of the number of days he rents the scooter. So that would be letter B. And then by default, letter A is going to be some friends want to share equally the cost of a $50 lunch receipt. The price for each friend pays is a function of the number of friends. So we would take the $50 and divide by the number of friends to get the price that each person would pay. In example eight, we're looking at writing functions to model some real world situations. In this example, you're buying bottles of a sports drink for a softball team. Each bottle costs $1.19. What function rule models the total cost of the purchase and can you evaluate the function for 15 bottles? Let's say that we relate that the cost is the price of the bottle times the number of bottles you purchase. So if we want to pick some variables, I would pick C for representing the cost, and I would rep choose the variable B to represent the number of drink bottles that you're going to buy. And then we could write the situation. So the cost is $1.19 for every bottle. And then we want to evaluate for 15 bottles. So $1.19 times 15 bottles is going to be the total cost for the purchase. And I get $17.00. $0.85 cents for purchasing 15 bottles. Finally, in our last example, we're going to rent a car. And if you rent a car for one day, driving it 100 miles, the cost is $45. If you drive it 150 miles, the cost is $57.50. And we want to fit a linear function to the data points. So let's think about that. We know that 100 miles would give us $45. And we also know that if we drive 150 miles, that's going to be $57.50. So we could calculate the slope, the change in the y values, divided by the change in the x values. And that's going to give us a quarter. So the model that we're going to use would be slope intercept form. We could say the model is y equals mx plus b. And I can pick, let's pick this ordered pair here, the 100 and the 45. And we'll substitute that. So 45 is the slope, which was a quarter. So we know this is a quarter times the x value, 100, and that way we'll find the b value. So you should remember that from um, Algebra 1. So moving the decimal two places, our b value is 20. So the equation that would model this situation in y equals mx plus b form would be 0.25x plus so we have our equation, and then in part B, our final portion is use the function to find out how much it will cost for you to rent the car for one day if you drive it 200 miles. So if our model is y equals 0.25x plus 20, and we're going to drive the car x miles or 200 miles then we want to substitute 200 in place of our x and 200 times 0.25 that's 50 plus 20 so that would cost you 70 dollars to rent the car for one day if you drive it 
200 miles. Thanks for joining me. That's the end of Lesson 1 in Chapter 2.